All right, in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you this uh, set equality that we just talked about in our class. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to prove two things. We're going to prove first that the inverse image of the union is a subset of the union of the inverse images. Okay, so we'll uh, first, um, I have these words backwards. I want to prove this statement and I want to prove this, I should just mention for all sets C and D, where C and D are subsets of the codomain. Okay, so C and D are subsets of the codomain B. So uh, first we'll prove um, that the left side is a subset of the right. And then later we'll prove that the right side is a subset of the left. Okay, and then later we'll show that the inverse image of C union the inverse image of D it's a subset of the inverse image of C union D. Okay, so first um, let's let T be in this set that we're starting with, pre-image, uh, or rather the inverse image of C union D. Then that means the F of T is in C union D. So either uh, F of T is in C or F of T is in D. And if f of t is in c, then that means that t is in the inverse image of c, and we're done, because um, that implies that t is in the inverse image of c union, whatever other set we want, in this case, the inverse image of d. Uh, and then likewise, similarly, if f of t is in d, then we can do the exact same move. Uh, then T is in the inverse image of D. So T is in, again, the inverse image of D union, whatever other set we want, in this case, the inverse image of C. Okay, there we go. That's the first half of the proof. So that shows this first equality that we wanted. Next, we'll do the other equality. We're gonna let we're gonna pick some arbitrary element in this first set. So next, uh, pick some arbitrary element, say T, in the inverse image of C, union the inverse image of D. And uh, this means that either T is in the inverse image of C, or T is in the inverse image of D, or of course both, but this covers all of our bases. And if T is in the inverse image of C, so if T is in the inverse image of C, then that means that F of T is in C. And um, therefore F of T is in C union, whatever other set we want. So T is in the inverse image of C union D. Exact same argument gets to the other part. Let me just write it. If, oops, if T is in the inverse image of D, then F of T is in D. So F of T is in D union C. And therefore T is in the inverse image of C union D. Is that what I wanted? That does not feel like what I wanted. Is that what I wanted? Yeah, that is. So T is in the inverse image of C union D and we're done. That's it.